I mean, what is the best way to hold a tiller extension for different conditions? Walk me through that. Uh, well, like every other thing, there's no one answer because, um, you know, there's no best way to overall to hold a tiller extension. There's uh, different ways to hold it in different conditions when you're trying to do different things. So, you know, in short, you want is, you know, you want to hold it in a ergonomic way, a way that puts your body in a comfortable position. And, um, but also that you can steer the right amount. You know, there's conditions where you don't want to steer a lot and you want to be able to lock the tiller almost in and do tiny movements. And then when you're trying to steer through a big aggressive waves or whatever, you need to be able to really move your arm a lot. And, you, you know, you have a lot more control in front of your body for that and, and um, how you, you know, so it changes. You know, I'm very deliberate about the way I hold my tiller extension uh, for different conditions. All right, you got some examples? I do. Uh, so the first one is what we, we, we always call this frying pancakes. It's holding the tiller behind you. And when you do that, you have, um, you know, your body, you can really put your fingers on the deck and you just kind of go back and forth so you can feel these small movements. Uh, so with that, I'm gonna show you the, um, you know, the J, this is a J70. And what we're doing here is you can see the tillers behind him and his knuckles are on the deck. So, you know, sometimes I drag my knuckles and sometimes I, um, you know, sometimes I'll, I'll actually put my fingers on the deck and almost walk them back and forth for really small movements. But you can see here when I play this, that there's, you know, the tillers, just these little incremental movements, you know, just trying to keep the boat right on the wind going fast, um, you know, you're holding it sometimes like he is with his, his whole hand around it. Sometimes I'll, you know, if I really want gentle feedback on it, you know, sometimes I'll even hold it with my fingertips so I can feel how much tiller is pulling against me. And that's the feel of the boat. I know when, when it's, when it's healed up a little much, or if I get a little pressure and, or when it, when it gets light and I need to heal up more and, and maybe steer a little bit down. So I like this for the fine tune. I know we know some people have, um, you know, whatever it is at the, the, the butt end of the till extension, some rubber balls or something like that. And um, I found sometimes the, those, the rubber balls are really kind of give you that little grip on the deck. You just plant it again in those, those, it's almost like sitting on the tiller, but just really minimizes it and that allows you to use the crew weight instead. In my uh, tornado catamaran years, we'd have, um, um, you know, a cork ball at the end and you'd kind of drag that across the deck and it would slowly wear down, you know, eventually it would get flat. And, <laughs> you know, I personally prefer to kind of have my knuckles or my fingertips on the deck because then I can feel how much it's moving. I think you, you can really lock it with that ball, but I think you can lock it really well with your knuckles too. And then you know how much you're moving. It's direct feedback. I can feel it whether I'm wearing gloves or not. I love that feedback. So I don't like putting, even if I have a ball at the end, put the ball in my hand. I put that ball, my fingers between the ball and the deck. Mm -hmm. I really want to control fine movements in this stuff. Let's talk about just, I mean, it's somewhat tangential, but um, you know, looking at the, the video that we have up here quickly in terms of uh, body and you, you talk about ergonomics and, and you know, he's, uh, the helmsman here is kind of twisted and you know obviously you know this is his way to, to look forward but um explain a little bit about just that that comfort of being i call you know more perpendicular and square keeping both butt cheeks and just being comfortable um yeah I, i'd almost prefer you know that he take this opportunity to twist his body more like if he just twisted his whole body forward because i think it's almost like he's reaching behind him here and um, I think if he sat out just a little more or held the tiller a little further in so his shoulder wasn't back like that. But also, I think if he kind of swiveled his hips a little bit, he could look forward more comfortably. Like, I, I feel like he's twisting his head a lot to look forward. And, and if he had to look up wind a little bit to see the next puff, it would be even a little, a little more so. But yeah, I think um, one of the reasons you're holding the tiller behind you is if you put it in front of you, look how far in he is. And now the tiller would be uh, more in line with the, the tiller. 
the tiller extension would be more in line with the tiller, whereas now it's 90 degrees to the tiller, which gives you maximum control. Uh, sometimes I see people in lighter air, like have the tiller extension almost in, you know, kind of leaning in and they have it in front of them. And then they're turning by moving their wrists a little bit, right? Like, and I, I, boy, I think that's kind of the opposite of ultimate control, right? You don't have that fine, fine tuned feedback. Yeah. All right. So that's frying, frying pancakes, eggs, frying something in the pan. Um, yeah. Works really well for both dinghies and keelboats here, obviously. Yeah, you're right. So this, this is not a dinghy centric uh, technique. And, you know, it's, it's any boat with a tiller and a tiller extension. I think these, um, you know, bigger, tiny, these, whether I'm in my sunfish or sailing a small keelboat, J24, J70, whatever I'm sailing, I do exactly the same thing. You know, you know, it feels a little different, you know, body movement's different, but I still hold the tiller. The same principles hold. All right. So it, it's, as it gets windier, the tiller, you need, you need more rudder movement. So, um, we're talking Correct. About so I think windier and, and probably more importantly, wavier. You know, like as soon as you have to start steering a lot for whatever reason, um, there's sort of an in-between amount. So the next video I'm going to show you is a Melgis 15 from behind. And, um, you know, they're, it's in front of this him, but, uh, but it's also low. And this sort of combines the best of those two worlds in that when when it's low like this you know you can see the tiller it still has some angle to it they're not hiked full because it's not that windy um, but even if they were hiked full i i like this so watch what he's doing here he's pretty much resting his arm on his thigh and steering that way so the tiller is moving a lot more than it did in the light air and quicker probably has more force on it so you have to be able to pull it so behind doesn't work then but you don't need that Mr. Microphone thing that you're taught as a kid either. You don't need it in front of your face either because you want small movements. One of the things I like about this is um, I really like, kind of like I was talking about, I could feel my fingers slide along the deck. Um, the, the, when I, I can slide it along my thigh as well. So, you know, this guy's doing the same thing right on his thigh so you feel how much you're moving and you get the feed the feedback that way you get the control of having something to slide against yet you know i think this looks really comfortable right like he's you know the arm is in a really ergonomic position it's not awkward at all right and so that's really just at the end of the day, as you're saying, like having good control, but not too much moving. The higher the tiller extension goes in the air, the kind of the less leverage you have on it, and you probably tend to oversteer. Yeah, and so you don't you want kind of to put it in a spot where you can still accomplish them as enough steering, but have control in this feedback. So the ultimate control and feedback is behind you with your fingertips sliding it along the. The rail but then you know if you have to steer more that's not practical um so then sliding along your thigh gives that same feedback feel but you have you're able to move it more and um you know the other thing that changes is uh, you know if you have to change your main sheet position you need to go grab the main sheet and what i was mean by main sheet is your grip with your your forward hand you have to grab it with your fingers on your tiller extension and re-grip and, you know, when it's lighter wind, you know, that's pretty easy to do. And you don't, you can have it behind you and you really don't need to regrip. You're not moving the main sheet a ton. Mm. And in, in this case, maybe you have to regrip occasionally and having it handy there so you can just move it over. You can't just go from frying pancakes to the, you have to switch your grip around. When you're frying pancakes, you're holding it like this. You can see my little picture in the thumbnail right mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> or maybe i should just stop sharing for a second and <laughs> you can look at me so you know when i'm holding a tiller extension behind me i'm grabbing it like this right like it's kind of like that when it's in front of me i have to switch my grip around and i'm holding it like this and that's where i can grab the main sheet i kind of grab it with these two fingers i can't do that when it's behind me right so if it's a condition where i have to 
you know, I'm going through enough main sheet that I feel like I have to re change my grip occasionally. Doesn't work to fry pancakes. Sounds good. Which makes me, as a, again, a tangential story. I remember I, in, in the first time I ever switched from the standard laser, whatever, aluminum tiller to an Acme, it was a real fat mm -hmm. carbon tiller. And like, holy smokes, the difference in the feel of the tiller extension of what you would think would just be not that big of a deal was, was <laughs> really amazing in terms of feeling the rudder. So if- Yeah, if and so much of this is, you know, the reason I want to drag my knuckles along the, the deck is I really want that feedback, like, you know, and, and the feedback is, is in two things, the how much am I moving it, where is it, and then it's how much it's tugging on me. And, you know, a nice tiller extension that you're comfortable in your hands, you know, your big fat carbon tiller extension, yeah, sure, you can steer with a big heavy aluminum one, but that really gives you feedback. Mm. You know, and I don't really like to hold the ball at the end. I like to hold the tiller sort of in something that it, it feels like it's gonna pull from my fingers for that extra feel. I feel like if I'm holding the ball, it's like, you know, iron grip, I don't <laughs> get that same feedback, you know? Mm. So, so even if I have a, I like something at the end, so it doesn't just by accident slip off the end, but you know, I'm not using that as something to grip. Yeah, so relax the grip, keep it cool, feel it. Yeah, so, I'm not a golfer, but they always say light grip, right? Like, cause so you can really feel the swing. And, um, you know, I always, I, I, even though I'm not a golfer, I think about that sometimes. I'm like, wait, I'm, I'm, I'm nervous and I'm clamping down on the tiller. No, you know, as little, little feel, as little grip as you can, can gives you the best feedback. When I'm doing that behind the, the frying pancakes, I'm often fingertips like this. I'm not going like that. And when it's in front of me, I'm trying to do it in my fingertips much as I can. Cool. All right. So we're at the top of the wind range. Uh, then what? Are we yeah. And, and, you know, I would say is it's much of a uh, wave range as it is wind range, right? Mm -hmm. Like, so when I get into waves, I got to really push the tiller through a, a wide range. Certainly have to change the grip a lot because sometimes you have to spool the main out and bring it back in. You have to kind of hand over hand it or at least one hand over, get another grip of foot difference or something. You know, when I'm frying pancakes, I might change my, you know, I'm measuring how much I'm easing or trimming the main sheet and, and ratchet block clicks, right? But when it's windy and wavy, um, it's feet, right? It's whatever it takes. Keep the boat under control. So this is, um, this is me and a sunfish. Uh, and, you know, this is the, the tiller, you know, in front of me, in front of my body, but, uh, you know, I'm holding it but I'm not dragging along my thighs either because it just, I need bigger movements than that. You know, I see I have to dump the main sheet on top of some of these waves. It's funny, I thought I was hiking harder than that. And I was <laughs> you always think you're hiking harder. But they, <laughs> while, while you're there, I think like, what about just real quick in terms of the hand placement uh, on the extension itself, sort of up close to your chest or down lower? I mean, I guess it's somewhat di dictated by your, your, your torso length. And yeah. And, and so I find that the more aggressively I have to steer, the higher up it gets. So it, it's, it's not like I'm either in this thigh mode or I'm up. It, it's sort of, it's sort of a transition and, and even bigger waves, I might even go a little higher, but I find that, um, you know, I have a ton of control, you know, when I'm in, in, if I have to do big movements, you know, this is, they always call it, this makes Mr. Microphone when you're a kid, right? Like hold it right in front of your face, but you have a lot of control in your arm right there, right? Like it's, if you're doing big moments, this is the ergonomic way to do it. If I'm doing a little, little um, smaller movements, you know, maybe it's down here a little bit. I can have more control close to my body and down to my thigh. Then the ultimate control is frying pancakes, right? So you know, as it gets waves get bigger, I would even go higher than this because I'm, you know, I feel like I'm sawing wood, you know, <laughs> you might have to do massive, massive changes in the tiller. And so the higher, I think that, and, and, you know, the tiller almost, you know, you almost have to go up like this so that you don't hit yourself with it, right? Because <laughs> if you're right. doing massive turn down on top of a wave. Um, the other thing about, I noticed, oh, go yeah, ahead. Real, um, yeah, so, well, you finish that thought because I, I want to ask about downwind eventually. Yeah. So the, um, you know, the thought here too is that, you know, you can see here that I every once in a while I go through a ton of main sheet on top of some wave. 
No, you gotta go I'm back. Just go back to oh, screen. I'm not, share I'm not sharing. I'm not sharing, am I? I'm looking at it, but you guys aren't. So you can see that occasionally I do, you know, a really big ease on the main sheet, then I have to regrip. So right there, I regripped, right? And that tiller is moving quite a bit. And then occasionally I have to just kind of, you know, I have to get that main sheet regripped again. So being right here is a really quick way to regrip. You know, the further away it gets from that, the more I have to move the tiller to regrip if I need to. Mm. Okay, before we go to downway, what's up with the draft stripes on your uh, sensor sail? Huh. Well, I'm, you know, I think uh, the sunfish has been kind of a COVID project for me. You know, everything else stopped. You could sail by yourself. And I was sure was confused on the shape of the sail. You know, it's got this triangle, <laughs> right? Like, like, look at this thing, <laughs> you know, like, so uh, I was really interested in, in how to bend the spar and all that kind of stuff. And, mm. and, you know, if you look at it, it's, it's pretty, um, it's a ton of bend in these spars. You know, look at that. Yeah. And, and it's unique to the sunfish is bending the boom and flattening the bottom of the sail, just like you do the, the top of the sail. So you see, I got two halyards on, I got one off and I was really curious what all that was. So, um, yeah. So what have you learned from, um, experimentation with the stripes? Well, that the, um, you know, that this sail is, is very full and, and very controllable. Like you think you don't have many tools. It's just the sunfish, right? It's not the sunfish we had when we were a kid, right? Mm -hmm. You can um, you can change the shape pretty radically, and that's pretty cool. It's um, one of the reasons that the sunfish is takes a wide weight range. You know, people are winning at 130 pounds and 200 pounds. You know, yeah. 120 pounds and 200 pounds. You've got so. your halyard set quite differently than uh, the the fellow to lured him. It looks yeah, like that's that. Paul John Patton to lured. He's mm -hmm. a world champ, so. He knows what he's doing, but he's also got 40 pounds on me. So it's a windy day in Sayville here, and I needed to depower, and he didn't. So there you, there you go. All right, back there on I topic. Go. So yeah. downwind, um, I mean, I know it's certain, like, particularly in the in lasers and the sunfish and stuff like that, you, it's it feels more comfortable to go back to frying whatever. Um, do the same technique uh, suggestions apply going downwind? Yeah, and I think, you know, the, I do everything downwind from, you know, it, it, a lot of it depends on where you're sitting, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're, for whatever reason, you're in the middle of the boat, you know, big waves and you got to steer a ton in my J24, I might just grab the tiller without the tiller extension because I have, you know, there's so much leverage on the tiller extension and I got to pump the main sheet with all the parts. Um, and then if I'm sitting out, you know, we're trying to heal the boat, or, you know, then I'll go to the frying pancakes a lot downwind because I'm pretty far forward. You know, that's another consideration on where you hold the tiller. If you're in a boat where you have to sit really far forward, which you do downwind, you know, I go in front of the travel bar on the J24. I almost have to have it behind me because otherwise, you know, I'm like stretching out the tiller forward, directly forward from the tiller extension, you know, so they're kind of in line and very hard to steer. And then you get to a dinghy, you know, you're selling a laser downwind or any round, round bottom dinghy doing those S turns and everything, you know, you're doing big turns. You got to kind of have it in front of you like this and be able to pump the main sheet too. So it's really the same principles, you know, the more control you want and the more the tiller is behind you, the more you need to like go fry pancakes or keep it low on your thigh if you switch your grip. And the more you have to steer, you have to get it in front of you. All right, okay. sounds good. So we we it's best to focus on, the, on how to do it right, but let's just quickly end this thing. And what what are some wrong techniques that you've seen in your coaching days? Yeah, so what I see wrong a lot is um, it, there seems to be a habit a lot of people where they kind of like holding it up here, you know, and and they just you know I, I feel like they don't have enough control and and. I think the, the bottom line is you want it as low and close to your body, whether it's behind you or not, as you can get away with. You know, the more you have to turn, the more you have to get it in this range, you know, and, but up here in light air never works, right? Like, like that's not good. And um, 
So that's what I see a lot. And I, I think people don't, they kind of get in one habit. You know, that's their mode. It's light, heavy, flat, wavy, you know, whatever, shifty, steady. They're always doing the same thing. I think you have to deliberately say, okay, today is the day it's better to fry pancakes. Today's the day, oh, it's a little too much during frying pancakes. I'm gonna rub it along, you know, have it laying in my thigh. I gotta steer a little more of that. It's right, you know, kind of chest level. I gotta steer a lot, so I'm gonna be super aggressive. And then right. while you do that, you're thinking about what you gotta do with your body, what kind of makes that happy with that too. So you kind of, you know, like I mentioned before, even if I have to steer quite a bit, maybe if I have to go really far forward, I still might steer behind me just because that angle with the tiller, you know, if the tiller is here and the extension's here, you, you have like no control. <laughs> the tiller's here, you got a lot. So, all right, simple topic, but it's so fundamental, right? And um, very important. It, and it really just sets the the tone for everything else, right? If you can steer comfortably and properly and can turn your body and see and see your telltale, see the wind coming and have a lot of control of the tiller while you do it, you know, it just sets the stage for everything else. Excellent. I think the deliberate, the deliberate, you know, saying, okay, today, this is how I'm holding the tiller is the step, step one. Like, okay, I don't need a lot of, you know, I, I do need to move it, but not too much. It's on my thigh. I need to move it a lot, et cetera, you know? So control, keep it in my thigh. A lot of movement, yeah. keep it high. It's uh, Keep you know. it high. And, <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then when, and when, and when can you say, okay, I don't need to switch my main sheet. Anytime you need to switch your main sheet grip, you have to be able to, you know, you have to have it somehow in front of you. But as soon as you don't have to, frying pancakes is great. All right. Awesome. Thanks for the advice. And I guess for the, <clears throat> the viewers of this, I think we should probably tease up that next time we meet, you got to tell us all about uh, your son, Sam's URL 1000 adventures and um, share, a little, yeah, share some videos and stories of the, the insanity of that race and uh, what they went through. What do you say? Right. A lot of breakdowns, uh, 12 cap sizes, a broken foot. And a thousand miles of beach cat racing out in the Atlantic Ocean through the surf that's really not designed for. <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot of holding it up high, I imagine, then, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think just hang on for dear life, I think is more like it. One of the legs of nine of the 13 boats didn't make it. So only four of them made it through that leg. Awesome. There were All right. Well, I know you guys have some, some video and some content, so maybe if we can wrangle Sam out from uh, work or whatever, we'll, we'll get, get him to join as a guest and we'll hear, hear, what, hear what really happened. Cool. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Dave. Have a great weekend. Yep. We'll see you next time. Yep. Bye-bye. All right.